Hey, what is up, everybody? Welcome to the Guilty as Charged podcast presented by our friends over at Prize Picks. My name is Steven, and I am the host, as always. And joining me are my guys, Tyler and Arjun. Arjun is back from his uh, rough little go there a little bit. You can share whatever you want to share, but uh, we're glad you're doing okay. Glad you're uh, coming on tonight. And uh, perfect time from uh, Tom Pellicer tweet to break down all the financials of the Chargers week here. So, Arjun, uh, what's up, man? How are you doing tonight? Doing good, doing good. Uh, yeah, I had a little bit of a rough kind of two or three week stretch a couple of weeks ago or like last week. Uh, finally over, excited. You know, I was able to be basically be closer to full health at the start of free agency. So, you know, football cures a lot of things and just being around everyone on Twitter, being around you guys definitely uh, helped to get my spirits back. Yeah, love to hear it. Glad you're glad you're doing well. Uh, glad Michigan's kind of warming up for you a little bit as well. And uh, Tyler's here too, man. Tyler, what's up? How are you doing tonight? Arjun, did you really say that being around Twitter made you feel better? Uh, wow, that, <laughs> you must have hit the block and mute button pretty well the last couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I guess just like having the kind of thrill of seeing some of these contracts come in, seeing, you know, if my predictions came correct, you know, not a lot of them came correct this year, but I, there also weren't a lot of free agents I was projecting the Chargers to bring back except for Lohi and Gerald. So I didn't have a lot of predictions going, but – um, I, thought, I thought it was a really fun, fun free agency the first couple of days and a lot of uh, big moves here and there. A lot of money being tossed around, a lot of players coming in above where like people like Brad Spielberger had them projected. So interesting to say the least. And I mean, I think it, it's the, the Chargers moves have been really interesting as well. And I'm glad to talk about it. Yeah, 100 percent. There's a lot to dive into here. Um, this is. Great timing, of course, from Tom Pelissero, breaking out the details of the Joey Bosa and Klumac, uh contracts here. And we'll dive into the cap specifics, but uh, I want to dive in from like a surface level here first. Um, I was wrong. I did not think that Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack would both be back under contract um, for the Chargers in 2024. I thought they would uh, essentially choose one. Um, but I think I'll give some of my thoughts on, on like on the field here, but um, Arjun, why don't you uh, kick us off here in terms of the finances and things like that? Is Was this the right decision or were you kind of in the same camp that you felt like they were going to have to move on from one or the other? Yeah. So I had this, you know, kind of like mini speech prepared 10 minutes ago <laughs> and then the Tom Pellicero <laughs> tweet came out. And honestly, like I'm happier now. Like I was, mm. I'm not saying I was like completely in the negative when I saw the tweets, you know, I, I thought the best move was just to, get rid of uh, either one of Mac or Vosa. I didn't, I thought a restructure could be on the table. I didn't think it made a lot of sense. Um, I remember this time last year, I wanted them to reset the roster, but knowing that Telesco and Staley were on the hot seat, they were never going to do that. I thought new right. regime, you know, you have this, you have a five year, you know, extension or whatever. And they opted to go with doubling down on the roster. Now the, the Schefter tweets said restructure, right? And yeah. if you if you followed me yesterday, you know, I said a Mac restructure, it, it can only mean he took a pay cut or they added void years. And I said the one thing the Chargers have never done ever, they've never used void years. It could it could have been a Tom Telesco thing. It could just be a it could be a John Spanos. It could be an Ed McGuire thing, but they've never used void years in any contract that they've had. So they were going to break precedent. New regime, you know, Joe Ortiz, Chad Alexander. They could have broken precedent with Khalil Mack. But as Tom Pelissero said, he took a pay, Khalil Mack took a pay cut. Khalil Mack took a $4 million pay cut coming off a 17 sack season, his, his most productive season as a pro, and he, yeah. he took a pay cut. The Joey Bosa news came out today. Same thing. They used the word restructure, which again could have been, and I said, I would, I, I'm not a fan of this move unless it's a pay cut. And based on Pelissero's tweet, uh, Bosa took a $7 million pay cut, but the entire, but he got his base salary basically fully guaranteed. And I have, I have the over the cap pulled up, but basically, you know, the, the Chargers were able to convince these players to take a pay cut, which is, you know, good. Now, how this affects the future cap, it really doesn't because in 2025, it's not really affected at all. We'll get into the specifics later, but I think, you know, now that we have the details, it's, a pretty good situation for the Chargers, keeping both on the roster at a lower cost. So I'm I'm pretty happy right now. I think it went the you know it, it was a lot of uh, there was a lot of amb ambiguity with the tweets, and we finally got it straightened out, and it, it happened at really the perfect time for us. 
tends to be an annual tradition to, for Schefter to tweet something out, and then you kind of have to wait a little bit longer for more clarity on that. As far as Joey Bosa being back, yeah, I am surprised. I thought there was maybe a 5% chance that he stayed on, but you keep Mac. It seems like you're keeping Keenan. You move on from Mike Williams. It felt like Joey Bosa, whether it's cut, trade, whatever, they'd make one of those decisions by Friday. Did not expect keeping him, but I also didn't expect what they've done here with Mac and Joey Bosa's contract. So as far as the financial aspect, I'm going to sit back and let Arjun do his thing. Um, but as far as Joey Bosa staying on, it's a complete bet on yourself. And I don't mean Joey, I mean Jim Harbaugh and the program and the staff. If you think this is something you can work on and fix, Stephen and, and I talked about this, even discussing Joey as being gone, it's not an on-field thing. It's an injury thing. Yeah. But you get him on the field, you get him healthy, you get him working, buy-in, different scheme. You got something special. So it's, it's Jim Harbaugh, Joe Ortiz, Ben Herbert, Jesse Mintz, <laughs> betting on themselves that they can take Joey Bosa and what he has not been and return him back to what he has been and what he's paid to do. So I'm excited to see if they can do that, but it's not without risk. I think everyone's suddenly going, Oh, here we go. Like it's going to be awesome. There's a ton of risk here. You, well, if you've watched the last two years, every Chargers fan has noted, it's been not a lot of Joey Bosa and some pretty significant injuries, uh, tearing your groin off the bone in two separate places. Not fun. Uh, so, and then a litany of other injuries with that. Yeah. So, plenty of risk there. Don't get me wrong. But again, it is hard on them, betting on themselves. But they have the program, the scheme, the coaches, etc., to make this as good as possible. But I, I am still surprised though, because with with Giff Smith gone, you know, they they were very much attached to the hip. I felt like, yeah, with Smith gone, I felt like okay, like this is a natural departure point, new regime, etc. I've had it hinted to me a bit that Mac might have been. A big part of him staying because Kilimak has that kind of influence on Joey. So him potentially sticking around is because they also kept Mac around. Um, but I think Jim Harbaugh also lends himself to that as well. So again, I it just I like it, but it's very risky. Yeah, there's definitely health risk. And we talked about that yesterday, you know, with the likelihood of moving on from Joey Bosa. A lot of that's driven from his availability. And you know, I I think this is like equally shocking on both sides. You know, like Arjun laid out, Khalil Mack had a career season. If you compare his 2023 season and his defensive player of the year season with the Raiders, last season when actually, was actually more productive than the defensive player of the year season in terms of pass rushing and run defense. So it's it, that's a, a big surprise. I mean, it, it speaks to, you know, the commitment that, that these two are having towards 2024 and – I think there's a lot of unfinished business between the two of them, you know, and they spoke about that last off season and then Joey got hurt again. So I think there is that mentality that those two signed up to be the one, two edge rush. We'll see. I think Thule probably could, could have some say there in terms of who's the two uh, on the team. But um, I think it speaks to that aspect of things and, and just how much they want to be here in Los Angeles. Joey, Taking a pay cut is a surprise based off of his agency, based off of how they've operated in the past. But in a vacuum, a guy like him who's had all of these injuries, you know, being approached to take a pay cut is definitely not a surprise. So it's it's great work by Joe Ortiz and company. I, I did not expect the two of them to come together and be able to keep both of these edge rushers around. So it's, it's going to be fun if Joey Bosa can stay healthy right like that's the thing if you look at his 2023 season so after the bye week when he was like fully healthy quote unquote between week six and ten before the packers game this was one of the best edge rushers in the league again for for in terms of per play stats so he was um fifth overall in in pro football focuses pass rush grade he was 10th overall among edge rushers in win rate he was uh let's see here he was 23rd in prp so this is one of the most productive pass rushers in the league when he's healthy still and i understand it's a big if <laughs> it is a big if but if they can ben if ben herbert can come in and work some magic here and get 12 games out of joey bosa instead of six or seven that's a huge win for this team going forward so i'm excited to see what it's like i'm uh if they can get this guy healthy and be able to round into form and if he is healthy then you're talking about the best edge rush trio we've seen in quite some time. But again, it is a bit big if there is a lot of injury risk here. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to see what it looks like, but it's a lot of faith in Ben Herbert and company for sure. I just uh, Arjun, go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
there's a, there was another tweet that Pelissero just sent out actually, which it, it it it's really interesting. He says so so basically how a pay cut a pay cut works is like you save the same amount of cash and cap. It, those should be equal. But Pelissero mm-hmm. said because for based on the pay cuts, they set they save eleven point two five million dollars in cash, which is the sum of the two pay cuts. Mac. Max pay cut was 4.25 million and Bosa's was 7 million. So you add those two together, that's 11.25 million. But then he also says the two restructures save them around $24 million in cap space. So it doesn't add up. There's $12.75 million not accounted for right now, which means. Is that a void year thing? No, it's not really. It's, it, it could be, it, it, I mean, I think what it's saying is like they took a pay cut, but there's 12.75 million not accounted for, which means they 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 had to have restructured, like on top of the pay cut, if that makes sense, because like that's the only way, okay. like, because again, like if the pay cut alone, you're basically just adding up how much money both players are losing, which is 11.25 million. That's how much cash they're saving, but. He says there's 20, but the cap space saved should be the exact same, mm. but it's not. So I don't think we have all the information yet. I think we need to wait. I mean, I, I that uh, the only reasonable explanation for more cap savings is they restructured their base salary to push money into the future on top of the pay cut. Does that make sense? So no. Joey has Joey has next year. Is that where that restructure is coming from? I think so. I mean, they could, again, they could restructure Mac and add void years. They've never done it. Um, so, okay, I'm going to, so Bosa's base salary or Bosa's base salary plus roster bonus got shrunk from 22 million down to 15 million. Um, Do you want you know, us to have a uh, overcap on the screen right now? Yeah, yeah. Honestly, okay. that would be, that, that would be helpful. I know, awesome. I know it's, it's I know it's kind of confusing. But basically, I don't think we have all the details details yet uh, is like the summary. So you can sure. see here, like, so Khalil Mack, when um, <laughs> when Tom Pelissero is talking about he took a pay cut from twenty three point two five million, the twenty three point two five million is adding his base salary in his non prorated bonus. His non prorated bonus is a roster bonus, essentially. Yeah. So that's where you get the twenty three point two five. The sum of those somehow they t- they subtracted four million dollars. I'm I'm just gonna guess it's easier to just subtract four million dollars from his base salary. So in essence, they lowered his base salary from seventeen point five five to thirteen point five five. And then for Bosa, they lowered his base salary from say fifteen million to eight million. So you know that's that's how you get eight million plus the roster bonus of seven million. But again, based on what Pelissero is saying, there's there's an extra $13 million that we're not accounting for that they're saving against the cap. So that $13 million, you know, it could come from Bosa or Mac. It's easier to do Bosa because he has, you know, a 2025 year. So, um, so Talia, can you, so for Mac, can you uh, change cut to extend uh, re- or rene- renegotiate, submit? Like click submit. I'm, I'm, I'm hitting uh, it, guys. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm hitting okay. it. Maybe, maybe it's just slow overall because it's you know free agency. Ha! Um, can I hit transact? So lower his base salary down to twelve point five five. Uh, guys, I am hitting the number two. I oh, I see, I see. <laughs> Oh, uh, it's making you delete everything. All right. So this is what I'm guess. Um, so this is lowering. Wait. Uh, hold on. Sorry. Can yes. you do thirteen point five five, not twelve? I messed up. Um, I can't even walk and chew gum, but I'm gonna try to keep up with you, buddy. There. Okay. And then transact. So that should save four million dollars against the cap. Boom. And right. then for Bosa, change cut to. Um, Extend or renegotiate again. Sorry to interrupt, Arjun, but Daniel Popper agrees that he thinks void years involved to turn 11.25 in cash savings into 24 million in cap space. Yeah. 
And that's that's what I'm guessing. Okay, so for Bosa, can you change base salary? Change the base salary from fifteen million to eight million. That one is much easier for me to type. Thank you. And then, can you make the guaranteed salary fifteen million in twenty twenty four? That's it. Yeah, and then we can transact. Okay. So the Chargers went from about seven million dollars over the cap to. Uh, three million under, so they're cap compliant now. So this this represents the eleven point two five million dollars that they saved strictly from the pay cuts. Okay. Um. So then we're this, talking about adding the void years on on top of that. Yeah, and I don't think I don't know if we were able to do that right now because we already did a transaction with Khalil um, or Joey. But again, I don't know which of the two players we're we're getting yeah, these cap yeah. savings from. Um, so, so basically like how, how it works, right? Like you can restructure, you can restructure, uh, a player's base salary and roster bonus. So both Khalil and Joey have a base salary and roster bonus. You just need to make sure their base salary is at the minimum base salary that uh, that player can have based on their number of accrued seasons, which is usually like 1.125, 1.25 million. So based on the transaction, the cap savings we have, or the pay cuts we did, Joey Bosa has $15 million in base salary. We can, we can convert about 13, 13.5 of that into a signing bonus to spread out over this year and next year. But for Khalil, we can convert up, uh, he has about 18 million uh, in base salary plus roster bonus, and we can convert up to like 16 million of that. So again, I don't know if it's a combination of both. I It's tough to kind of speculate. Just know the cap space we have on the screen, the 3.2 million in cap space, based on based on what Pelissero is reporting, we can add another $12.25 million on top of that. So we're, the Chargers are sitting at about 16 million, uh, yeah, about 16 million, uh, mm. slightly under. 16 million in cap space based on the reporting. I just don't know which players it is. I don't know if they're adding void years. I don't know if it's Bosa and they're just going to you know, push money into 2025. Either, I mean, either way, if they're restructuring a deal, they're losing cap space in 2025. But I think if my math is correct, they should have about $16 million on face on everything. Are you guys with me? Or, yeah, I got gotcha. you. Yes, I got okay. you. I hope that was. I will not repeat it though. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think, uh, I mean, you see like the exercise of trying to work through these things is, is no easy task, obviously. So $16 million in cap space is huge. Like we, we talked about that gives the, the chargers a, a good amount of, of change here to, to spend in between now and the draft and, and figure out how to fill these, these uh, cap spaces. So um, I, I think this is obviously great news and, and great work by Joe Ortiz and company being able to figure this out, being able to get the guys to buy into this kind of deal. Um, what do you make, Arjun, of the the also tweet from or the part of the tweet from Tom Pellicer that it gives Joey and Khalil more power for more control yeah. over their 2025? What does that exactly necessarily mean? Yeah, a no, great question. So uh, if, if people didn't see the Pellicer tweet, Khalil Mack took a pay cut, but he also he he has a no franchise tag clause after the season. So. Uh, Max never been franchise tagged in his career. I mean, he's never needed to. He's one of the best pass rushers, and he's always yeah. gotten his deals done ahead of time. Um, but he is a free agent after this year. The Chargers could theoretically franchise tag him if he wanted to, but now because he took the pay cut, how the NFL works, it's always a, I'll give you this, you give me that. So the Chargers convinced him to take a pay cut, but now he has control of his free, uh, of his future. He can decide to leave if he wants. He can decide to retire if he wants. Um, based on him, agreeing or based on them agreeing that he's not going to be franchise tagged sounds like he's going to be continuing to play after 2024 so he is in control of his own future um, for joey bosa uh, we did uh, represent it in the contract but he's taking a pay cut a seven million dollar pay cut but that 15 million dollars is fully guaranteed on top of the roster bonus becoming fully guaranteed this friday so tomorrow in you know probably 24 hours 15 hours that seven million roster bonus that he's due yeah. or whatever it is it's going to be fully guaranteed. So his entire 2024 salary is fully guaranteed. Oof. Now, he's taking a pay cut, which in, in all cases of the world is good. But now the problem is because they fully guaranteed his deal, I don't think they can trade him this season. If, yeah. you know, 
we're all hoping for a great Charger season. Let's just assume, you know, a negative, something happens. They're two and six at the deadline. They can't trade him and get any cap back. They they fully guaranteed his entire deal now. His base salary, his roster bonus are going to be fully guaranteed tomorrow. He has a signing bonus, which is fully guaranteed. Any team that trades for him is not going to take on any cap unless they work it out. But I, I'm pretty sure based on contract language, because it's fully guaranteed, the Chargers have to pay it out completely. So it's this kind of makes Joey Bosa untradeable. And Khalil Mack would be the likely trade candidate if something was to happen in the middle of the season. Sure. Um, so on top of uh, Bosa getting a fully guaranteed base base salary of fifteen million dollars, which you know for a guy that's missed more games than he's played in the last two years, I'm not too sure if that's the smartest move. But again, it's a, a seven million dollar pay cut. They have to give something, which is fully guaranteed. He also can make back four million of that seven million in sack incentives, which. I, you know, I, I was DMing with Daniel Popper about this. Like, I think that I thought that was the likely case that he would take a pay cut in his base salary with a chance to earn some back with playtime incentives or sack incentives. I do believe the Ravens uh, use that in their contracts in Baltimore. So I think Cortez brought that over, which is nice. So he has a chance to make back four of that seven million dollars, which I think would hit the cap in 2025. Um, and then he also gets an increased roster bonus, a, a $4 million increase in his roster bonus in 2025, which becomes fully guaranteed on the first day of free agency. So, you know, the typical Wednesday, the first Wednesday of free agency. So, um, so the $7 million he lost, he can actually make back 8 million of it in sack incentives. And if he's on the roster next year. So again, it's a, it's a push and pull. I think the chargers handled it well. I mean, if you save, a, if you get, you know, two of the, premier addressers in the league to take $11 million away from them in cash. Um, obviously, Joey can make it back and Khalil is controls his own destiny now. But that is kind of the rundown of uh, what the Chargers had to give in order to get the cap savings and cash savings. Yeah, good point from Alex Kathan, too. Not that it affects the calculus, but I think Pell Sarah said Joey's roster bonus got kicked up by $4 million and date got moved to Wednesday instead of Friday. That's for 2025. That's not for currently so he, he didn't get the roster bonus that still is tomorrow but uh like Arjun pointed out that's a, a nice way for him to uh make some extra cash so I, I I'm in like Tyler said there's a lot of risk in guaranteeing this kind of contract for this kind of player but I think this is I, I think it's a fair outcome for both sides here you know you you, you kind of give and take here with the contract negotiation so uh, here's to hoping for a healthy Joey Bosa, man, because uh, he's going to need those yeah. sack incentives, and uh, the Chargers are going to need him to stick around. I'm curious what his market would have been had they had had they cut him, because uh, I forget who said it, but that you know, it suggested that his market was at an all time low. His, his, Brad. His, his Brad said, yeah, Joey's worth, I guess, was at an all time low. So I'm curious if I'd imagine so. It was much easier to take this cut, restructure, void years, whatever it ends up being, rather than say, okay, hey, release me, and I'll go mercenary it for year after year after year, like a Jadavion Clowney or something. Yeah. It, it, we'll see how they, they affect the, these cap decisions. Uh, one final, I guess, money question here. Uh, I was going to ask this as well. Do you think that a Keenan extension is still on the table here, Arjun? Uh, yeah, no, I, I think it is. Um, you know, they're sitting at about, I, I forget if the over the cap cap space number is like just true cap space or effective cap space because effective cap space takes into account the rookie class um and then like i, I know daniel popper's thing a spreadsheet uh takes into account like in-season budgeting and i think after you count for that i mean the charges are probably your if the over the cap number is true is just cap space not effective cap space the chargers probably still only have like five or six million dollars or like less than that to spend on players and free agency now so they they could still use another move and i think the keenan extension makes a lot of sense i i don't know how much that would free up because we don't know how much money it's going to be for i haven't even like thought about what an extension could look like for him you've been a little it's busy okay. it's okay you've been you've been a little busy it's all right you're good yeah, yeah. um but I, I do think it's on the table and i think they should definitely explore it and uh josh palmer's a free agent next year like and you know keenan's a free agent next year they got a have someone on the roster, if then you know, especially depending on what they do in the draft. So I, I definitely think it's on the table, and it definitely would help to free up more space for a roster that desperately still needs some depth, guys. Like I know they've made some yeah. signings, but they there's still a lot of you know holes to fill, and I'm sure you know, we have a lot of time to continue to talk about that. 
Yeah, I'd agree. Plenty, plenty more to do. Center, linebacker, corner, other corner, another tight end potentially, QB2, you name it. Uh, so much to do still. Yeah, so around $16 million in cap space is where they currently stand. Um, that does not take into account the rookie class or in-season budget. So theoretically here, the, the Chargers could use that $16 million to fill out the rest of free agency, extend Keenan, use that savings, essentially to sign your, your draft class, um, and then they can kind of go from there. So with those cap savings, the Chargers have – uh, made a couple moves today, or at least potentially make a couple moves today. Uh, tight end Hayden Hurst, formerly of the uh, Carolina Panthers, Cincinnati Bengals, and Atlanta Falcons. I think that's the order uh, previously drafted in the first round <laughs> by the Baltimore Ravens, as well as a signing of defensive lineman Puna Ford. Um, I believe that one is as close to official as possible. I think uh, Hayden Hurst is still technically visiting with the Chargers. Um, but Aaron Wilson says that Puna Ford has signed. So um, that those are the, the next two dominoes to fall here. Um, Tyler, any thoughts on, let's start with Hayden Hurst here. And we talked a little bit about like draft outcomes or implications, right? I think this is more of a tight end three type than a tight end one, as people are kind of suggesting on Twitter. But what are your thoughts about Hayden Hurst? Yeah, this one's really tricky because, okay, so Will Disley is obviously your blocking tight end. No question about that. His press conference, he... You know, the reporters were asking, he talked about like, yeah, I'm a blocking tight end. Yeah. You need me to catch, I'll do it, but I want to play smash mouth football and get a tan while I'm here, hopefully. Um, Hayden Hurst, Hayden Hurst, I definitely see the Chargers doing a one, two, three with this group, but at the same time, you can't deny this is not a dynamic pass catching tight end group, especially when Donald Parham is your leading receiver from last year, but among yeah. these guys, and he was not playing hurt bench for a few games or not active for a few games. So they definitely need some help here. The, the question is really just how much um, also fun fact, Hayden Hurst had the worst pro football focus run blocking grade among all tight ends last year. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's definitely not your blocking type. And I know like there's, there was some clips I saw online uh, that he, he can block. Like he has the capability of blocking, but he's, he's a receiving tight end first and foremost. And I think, there are some risks here as well. Um, he had uh, a really scary situation with a concussion last season um, where he had actually like a little bit of am amnesia. Yeah, Jacob pointed out he did almost retire. So first and foremost, help, hope he's healthy and, and physically okay at this current moment. Um, if you're not familiar with his story, Mina Kimes actually did a, a great story on him a couple years ago. Um, you know, this is a guy who's been a very strong advocate for mental health. He actually uh was was suicidal at one point in his life and has dealt with a lot of mental health issues um so him and uh i think it was darren waller had like a great segment on espn about like advocating for mental health a couple of years ago so he's got a great story i hope he's helped i hope he's healthy first and foremost and in a really good spot mentally it sounds like just based off of his twitter that he is ready to to keep playing again um but to me this is this is like your play 20 snaps a game majority of them are receiving kind of player here so the yeah. the chargers are not going to have like a true tight end one in 2024 i think unless they take brock bowers that that would be your only tight end one at this point in time um i think they're essentially just going to try and platoon this thing between will disley the blocker who can who can do some receiving stuff as well he's not completely useless in that regard um Hayden Hurst is your receiving tight end. Maybe you keep Donald Parham or Stone Smart to maybe kind of make up some extra ground there. And then you have a rookie who you're going to give snaps as well. So I, I don't think this is a great signing. I think it's a step in the right direction. Like the tight end room for the Chargers has been a very, very poor spot on the roster. Um, if he's your tight end three, I think this makes the tight end room closer to a strength than it has been in quite some time. So um i'm a fan of the depth signing like i said earlier i think you're paying for competence here and uh we'll see how it works out but i'm not expecting him to be great i don't think he's gonna like tank the room either as, as some people have suggested so real quick guys uh just got word that charters for the first time did or are using void years hey so they did hmm. i i believe mac has at least one void year in his deal I'm not sure um, how much they're restructuring of Mac, 
but they are restructuring Mac. And I think they're going to have to restructure Joey based on the math. So I don't know if they're doing a max restructure. I don't think, uh, again, I, I just had to wait for the numbers to come out, but there is going to be at least one void year included in max deal, which means there's a combination of, you know, money that's being restructured for both Mac and Joey. The exact amounts again, uh, so Jack, but what this means basically <laughs> is nice. uh, Khalil Mack's contract ends at the end of this year. A void year is basically a dummy year that the Chargers could, can throw a prorated signing bonus. Essentially, what they have to do is the Chargers have to take a portion of Khalil Mack's base salary or roster bonus, convert, into, convert it into a signing bonus that they can spread over the 2024 cap and create a dummy year in 2025 to spread that signing bonus over that year of the cap as well. So essentially it just helps to smooth out cap space. It's a tactic that uh, we've seen very sharp front offices like the Browns and Eagles utilize. Uh, and thankfully the Chargers are following suit for the first time in that department. Um, they've never done this. And again, Clomac at least one void year. Um, the math won't add up to only uh, restructure his deal, which means there is a restructure of Joey Bosa's deal. At this point, just have to wait for Palacero, wait for Daniel Popper to tweet out more details about it. But there will be some, you know, initially I thought the 2025 cap won't be effective. There, now there will be, uh, you know, the 2025 cap will be affected in some capacity. Again, we just have to wait for the official numbers to come out because I, at this point, I do believe it is a combo of a restructure of both Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa. So just to clarify, we know they're using void years. It do, are we do know for sure it's for both players? Uh, I believe it's just for Mac. I mean, te okay. theoretically, they could do void years for Bosa um, based on their lack of use of void years in the past. I doubt they want to use void years if they don't have to. Uh, but it does sound like at least for Mac, there will be one void year. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they would necessarily have to put a void year onto Joey's contract. You know, obviously, Kilimac being a free agent, that makes a lot of sense there. But uh, yeah, this is new territory for the Chargers. No void years. I think it's, you know, like the Saints, it's very commonplace. Like the Saints do it every single year on like every single contract. So uh, maybe a, a sign of things to come regarding, you know, future cap negotiations there. Um, wanted to get it to circle back to this comment from Alex Katzen um, about Mr. Hayden Hurst, who did an interview in December where he said the concussion, while scary, was not career threatening. So sounds like he is healthy and, and ready to go. So uh, we'll see I, what happens there. I don't know if you guys saw his agent's tweet. His agent did like a hilarious like uh, jersey swap on like a, an art app where it just like was looked like a kindergartner's drawing, but uh, it was funny. Um, Arjun, did you have any thoughts about uh, Hayden Hurst uh, on the field? Um, you, you know, I, I think he fills a specific role. Uh, he's never, you know, his production's always been that of like a tight end two. He's played behind Mark Andrews. Uh, he had the chance to kind of step into a tight end one role when he was uh, after. Where did he go after Baltimore again? Before Cincinnati, or was it straight to Cincinnati? I think Atlanta? it was. I think uh, Baltimore, like, Atlanta, then Cincinnati. I know it was Cincinnati and, and Atlanta. And yeah, so so Baltimore, Atlanta, Cincy. You know, he he was in a full time role in Cincy. You know, the target share distribution. He was probably fifth in the pecking order there. You know, he, he had his best, he had his most efficient season under Greg Roman. He averaged a 1.69 yards per out run, which was 11th among tight ends in 2019. Uh, so I think, you know, Roman has gotten the most out of him from an efficiency standpoint. And, um, you know, he was still playing behind Mark Andrews at the time. I do worry a little bit about the injury history with the concussions. You know, I obviously hope he's back to full health and, um, you know, no lingering effects from that. And, yeah, I think the mental health stuff has been uh, really cool for him to come out and, and see. The other point is, he, you know, he's kind of old. He's on he's, – I think he's 30 at this point. Um, so that's another thing to keep in mind. But he does fill a role on this team, and which is different than what Will Disley brings. So I don't mind it. I just don't think it's a huge needle-moving no. move. Yeah. But it was, yeah. it was a necessary one to try and fill before the draft. Yeah. So just real quick before Tyler jumps back in, uh, two years in Atlanta, one year in Cincy in 2022, and then Panthers last year. Do we have uh, anything updated on the number of years given to Hearst, or we just know it, it's a deal? I would assume it's a one-year deal. I would imagine too. But yeah, no updates there, which is a bit of a surprise. 
He is a Charger on PFF already, though. So, <laughs> Charger in a Panthers uniform. Yep. yep. Yeah. Uh, Frank said one year. I, was that tweeted out officially? Uh, you know, Frank, he's probably got some, probably had some really cool party <laughs> with Charger people and found out. Uh, shout out to Frank, man. He's awesome. Uh, got to take a picture in the gym with Kalou Mack the other day. So that must have been fun. No, oh, that's one way to feel awful about your physical physique and, and <laughs> your, your strength training. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, I, I'm not seeing the one year specifically mentioned anywhere. It's probably right. I just it's don't probably see it. right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I also I'm don't see anything about the void years yet. So thank you, uh, Arjun, for dropping yeah, that for us so i so i always tune into the pod live fellas yeah only when arjun's on though <laughs> only when arjun's on <laughs> okay uh the other signing here that the chargers have made uh puna ford the defensive lineman from the buffalo bills who played five years in seattle first very unique body type as a 5 11 300 in town 310 pound man uh so this is a guy who was drafted out of the university of texas Played quite some time in Seattle. Very interesting profile as well. Started his career out as a nose tackle in Seattle, then eventually kind of shifted more towards a three technique, five technique, even has some edge reps out there. Um, looks like more of a pass rushing type in terms of his production, but his first two years, he was like a run stuffing uh, defensive nose guard. So very interesting profile from Puna Ford. Uh, I found some clips from our guys over at Cover One. Uh, the film looks good. I'm going to dive into some of that later on. But Tyler, any thoughts about Puna Ford and his fit for the Chargers? Yeah, solid signing. I think first and foremost, I looked up what are the height, weight, et cetera, measurements here. Clears the 300 pounds. I think he's he was like 310 on PFF, 307 or something like that on his RAS. So, you know, we're, we're trying to like consider this new regime. What are they like? What kind of preferences are there? Weight certainly seems to be one of them. You got to have a bigger body there. Was definitely surprised by the 5'11. And there's a lot of talk about like other players in last year's class and their height. 5'11, I definitely did not expect, but it, it certainly hasn't hurt his production by any means. Uh, I don't think he's necessarily, you know, your starting defensive tackle. He's not like your DT1, I should say, but it's, it's a good addition. Um, seems like a solid player. We'll have to watch the film, but uh, yeah, good so far. I thought there was maybe a reunion there with Will Tukuafu, um, but they missed each other by like a couple of years. So, oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. They, they both Seattle, I think. Oh, wait. No, I lied. Yeah. Cause Will Tuguafu was there recently. Uh, I'm sorry. Playing careers, they weren't together. Oh, okay. And then when he was coaching, that's what it was. Uh, yeah. 2022, 2023. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. 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 Yeah. No, I, I think this is, uh, again, you're paying for competency. I, the Chargers don't really have like a starting defensive tackle right now. Between him and Morgan Fox, you just have two guys who are, are veterans and can probably play some some specific roles here. So, you know, they're gonna need to get some development out of Otito Agonia. They're gonna need to draft a guy. Maybe uh Michigan defensive tackle Chris Jenkins is is that guy to be your your starting defensive lineman. But uh we'll see what happens here. We're Tyler and I are gonna dive into specific like future targets free agent targets specifically that we would like to see them sign on, on a different show here and probably next week. Um, we'll see how the rest of free agency goes, but um, Arjun, any thoughts on uh, Mr. Puna Ford? Yeah. Uh, you know, Phil's a need, you know, I think interior defensive line is kind of a underrated um, uh, point of that. It's just an underrated need that no one really talks about because everyone's so focused on, receiver and Joe Walt and everything, but like they need guys yeah. there. And I think, I think especially, I mean, Puna Ford doesn't change anything in terms of their draft strategy. If they trade back with Minnesota, you have Byron Murphy sitting there, you're, you know, or you have another one of those top defensive tackles. I'm going to, I have a tweet ready. I'm waiting for free agency to kind of slow down, but you, if you want an elite defensive tackle, you have to take one in the first round. Like Chris, like the top 10 salaries for defensive tackles, Every single one of them is a first round pick, except yeah. Chris Jones, who was taken with the fifth pick in the second round. So you want an elite defensive tackle play, you better go grab one in the first round. Because let me tell you, you they don't 
you know, elite def- defensive tackles, you don't, they don't grow on trees. They don't yeah. happen on mm-hmm. day two. So that was, you know, it doesn't change much from a draft standpoint. I do think they needed bodies there. And, um, you know, he's probably more of a pass rusher than a run stuffer based on his grades. I haven't really looked at it too much, to be honest. But, um, yeah, any any passes the 300-pound threshold that Mentor and McDonald and Harbaugh liked the past couple of years in Michigan. Hmm. Yeah, so just really quickly looking at – Specifically, interior defensive line. Tyre Tart is still a free agent. Now, like they get a visit Natty. today. Yeah, yeah, and they get a visit today. I think, okay. I think he'll be the DJ Reader replacement. It sounds mm. like if they sign him. Man, DJ Reader in Detroit. Woo! That's that's a lot of fun. That is a lot of fun. Uh, Jonathan Aiken signed somewhere. Yeah. Yes, I don't I remember. Like I, saw I saw his name come up. I forget where. Yeah, so officially, like, Tier Tart, Adam Butler. There's not a lot of defensive tackles out there. Uh, Austin Johnson. <laughs> SJD. It's, it's rough right now, yeah. SJD reunion. It's Let's just run back the previous room with the new coaching staff. Yeah. It's rough out there right now. So I think you are looking towards the draft and, you know, Byron Murphy in the first round is is probably rich for me personally, but uh, he's got a ton of hype out there right now. Um, I would prefer Johnny Newton, but he's got uh, he's got a lot of doubters out there too. But I love his tape, so it's it's uh, it's gonna be interesting to see how they tackle that specific problem. But Puna Ford, I'm excited to go watch the film because those clips that uh, Cover One guys tweeted out last season after the Bills signing were were fun. So I'm excited to see what that looks like. Um, for those asking or wondering. Eric Armstead signed a massive deal with the Jacksonville Jaguars today. So he is uh, hmm. no longer a free agent. And I don't think they would have been able to afford him even if he were still a free agent. Yeah, the only thing I'm seeing on Puna Ford when I just looked it up is that he was he missed a ton of time in the middle of the season, I believe, but it wasn't mm-hmm. an injury. He was inactive for just several games in a row. Yeah, Anthony from Cover One said that he was like a healthy scratch for some reason. So I don't know what that was about. I don't know about the Bills. How's their depth chart at D-Tackle? The D-Tackle was pretty they, good. Yeah, yeah, they were pretty deep at D-Tackle even after Daquan Jones got hurt, especially with Daquan Jones. Like, there was not a lot of room for Ford to step in. But even after he left, they still had, like, Ed Oliver and um, a bunch of other guys. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, a very busy day in Chargers land. A uh, very eventful day, one that I did not see coming. And... and uh, you know, for what it's worth, I'll, I'll own that. I guess people were saying that I was wrong or whatever, but congrats, I guess, if you predicted both edge rushers to take a pay cut, um, Tyler, Arjun, any, uh, final thoughts on the, the busy day in chargers land today? Well, Arjun, I mean, young Wesley wants to say that you were right. And Bosa does want to be here and this certainly proves it. Um, so thank you for that super chat. And then for make the transition, he was eating ramen with chopsticks and ate a piece of wood <laughs> off of chopsticks by accident. Let's go. I'm personally excited for Bosa under Harbaugh, by the way. Uh, buddy, uh, got to practice. Gotta yeah, practice. that's not great, man. You're not supposed to bite the chopstick, believe it or not. Um, but work, work on that. We'll, we'll come back to this. For what it's worth, I'm, I am not very good with chopsticks. So I would eat ramen with a spoon. Sorry. I'm just going to leave it in silence. I should just leave that in silence. <laughs> that's how we end the show. <laughs> uh, Josue says he's surprised that uh, the Chargers have not cut Morgan Fox. I don't think they can afford to do that based off of the rest of the defensive tackle room. It's a weird fit. And they could theoretically like get some draft capital for him if they wanted to trade him. But uh, yeah, they, they, they can't afford to lose Morgan Fox. They don't have any other avenues to get what he can bring and he's not a great run defender but he can play the run so mm-hmm. they they can't afford to do that at this point in time no i think your leading pass rusher would have had like 12 pressures last season then on like d tackle like they, you can't do that yeah. yeah i think you're probably gonna play a lot of three edge rusher sets <laughs> this year is is my guess um all right cool arjun any thoughts there yeah, um, I mean, I, I still think they, they need a center. There's still some quality centers out there. Bradley Bozeman would be a great signing, no comp pick. 
But I, I at this point, I what the hell are they going to do at linebacker? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you look at that free agent linebacker market, man. It's it's not great. You're you're either signing someone for really cheap, or you're signing someone who is really good in one area, like Zach Cunningham against the run and sucks against the pass. Like I, I really don't know what the plan is there. Everyone seems to like love Dayon Henley. Like let's not forget, like he, I know he was injured, but he, he couldn't even beat out Nick Neiman last year. So let's like temper our expectations for him. Um, and, you know, it seems like every day we're just getting closer to like a junior Colson date, you know, round three or trade back in round two pick. But they like I am seriously concerned for the I, I did not think the linebacking room could get worse after Kenneth Murray <laughs> left. But like, you know, and shout out to Kenneth Murray, you know, getting the Chargers a fifth or sixth round comp pick. You know, you do you in Tennessee. It's the linebacking room. is <laughs> Like this is the worst linebacking room in the NFL. Like I, and I don't yeah. think many people would disagree. Um, and I just like I don't know what the plan is. They don't there's no one really left like Tyrell Dawson. I thought could be a really good signing, really cheap. Uh, He's off the market. There's like, I if you look at over the cap, like who is a free agent that is even worth like looking at right now? Uh, Alex Katzen seems to like uh, Cody Martin, former Utah player. Anthony Hopper says Jerome Baker. Baker was cut, so he wouldn't count against the comp pick formula. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, that Devin defensive Bush. tackle. Or... <laughs> I don't know from the Seahawks. I thought De I thought I saw Devin Bush sign somewhere today. Oh, did he? See, I'm I'm way behind. Kaliki Hudson, Commanders. Um, let me see. What's uh, Andrew Gatchkar doing these days? Who? Andrew Gatchkar? You don't remember Gatchkar? I do not. Yeah, Brown signed uh, Devin Bush uh, earlier today. Oh, well, that amount of ideas for screwed. <laughs> <laughs> really, no Andrew Gatchkar? Huh? That doesn't. That's like, who was the other guy? I mean, Gatchkar was definitely one of those Telesco era linebackers. Who's the other dude before Neiman linebacker? Somebody, come on! We're not, we're not, we're not, we're not leaving without this. The linebacker before Neiman? Yeah, not like a starting linebacker, but a special teams linebacker. Come oh, on, the come one on, Chad. From Cal Poly, uh, Dzubnar. There you go, Nick Dzubnar. Yeah, what's he doing these days? If we can bring back Jerry Atauchu, Nick Vigil. <laughs> Nick Vigil. One. Yeah, yeah. You go. Nick Vigil. Let's do it, man. Let's go. Uh, Bobby Wagner signed in Washington for those asking. Uh, yeah, Cole the Christian linebacker Anson spot is tough. Defensive tackles is, is tough as well. Cole Christian Anson, there we go. Yeah, go get Cavell Connor and go back a few more years. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I think you're, I think Zach Cunningham would probably be my choice just because you know you could get like at least quality run defense, but then it's tough, 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 tough. Hayes Pollard, very good. These are good names. Who's the other guy? They really cycled through some some linebackers in the late twenty in the late twenty tens here. Like Josh Perry, Jatavis oh, Brown. Remember the one the one season of elite Jatavis Brown season? That was so much fun. Oh yeah, greatest. Yeah, it was Joey and Jatavis Brown competing for Defensive Rookie of the Year. Greatest, greatest year of my life. I'm sure Arjun just wants to kill us right now as we're just like not getting off this fucking stream. <laughs> Corey Toomer, that's who it was. All right, Corey we're Toomer done. Was good that's too. that's, that's yeah, the yeah, last yeah. Line, special teams linebacker we bring up today. Man, I'm kind of realizing that the Chargers linebacker history, outside of like Donnie Edwards and like previous guys, like it's been kind of a mess for most of my life. Yeah, it's not like Levante David for like 14 years or whatever yeah, it is. Yeah. Nope. Oh, we missed a super chat from Seth Floyd. How could we? A oh, Michigan fan here. Oh. I'll let Arjun take this one. I want to talk about Michigan. Uh, he says, y'all are going to love Minter. Dude is so good. Also would not be surprised if Jim brings in a lot of Michigan guys to the Chargers. My, my, if he gets Mikey Sanders still, the draft is an A+. Plus. I don't care. If <laughs> like, just get Mikey Sanders still to L.A., let him and Derwin go off the edge. I mean, I'm telling you, Mikey Sanders still is – like, I, I personally think Mikey Sanders still is the best corner in the draft Ooh. based on what, like, based on his role and, like, the impact you'll have. Obviously, slot corners are less valuable than – a Terry and Arnold or Quinion Mitchell, but I think you just watch his tape from last year and especially what he did in the playoffs. And Mikey Sanders still is just a baller. Spicy, spicy. I like it. Uh, I mean, listen, man, they, they do need a slot corner. I would be very worried about the lack of size at the secondary with him and Asante Samuel Jr., though. Don't yeah, no, totally, totally fair. And I mean, 
again, I, the Mikey Sanders thing is kind of a pipe dream. I don't know if it'll happen. I don't know. You know, just I, I really want to see him on the Chargers because he was my favorite player on the chart. He was my favorite player on Michigan's team for the past two years. Yeah. Wait, Seth is a Lions fan? Wait, no, no, no. You can't have Brian Branch and Mikey Samer still. Yeah, that's no. why I brought it up. You can't do that to me, dude. Yeah, yeah. no, no, no. That is completely unfair. You yeah. can have Samer still send us Brian Branch in return. That's, that's fair. fair. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Steven Cooper, another another linebacker. Although Steven <laughs> Cooper was pretty good for a couple of years, I feel like. <laughs> Sorry, one more super chat. They all keep sending them in. <laughs> Uh, we need Minnesota to trade for JJ. Uh, then oh, JJ at four, gotcha. And then get Marvin Harrison Jr. Um, oh, you know, honestly, Arjun, I'm not letting you go because we have you on here. Seriously, this JJ McCarthy stuff. How are we really it. feeling? This is a top five thing, top ten sort of thing. Yes, I I, I really do think Quasi will make a trade into the top five for him. I mean, if you look at if you just look at the stats, right? Dude's twenty seven and one as a starter. <laughs> no, nah, we've lost you, dude. Put the appendix back in. Buddy. <laughs> you know, it's an unserious take from Arjun when he begins with QB wins. <laughs> I'll I'll have more. I'll have better takes closer to the draft. But I know I like I seriously think Quasi's going to trade up uh, into the top five for JJ. I. I don't know if I, I don't know if I fully support it yet, but you know he comes from the Browns regime, which targets young players, and JJ's as young as they come. So yeah, um, and you know the kind of two year, at least two years of starting experience, like it matters. Like I'll, again, I'll have better takes closer to the draft, but right now we're we're pushing the JJ propaganda. We want it. You know, we're trying yeah, to we want it to happen. I just don't think yeah. it should happen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I agreed with your take though earlier. There was I guess I guess there was some like Jaden Daniels Vikings stuff been going on this week. But to me, if if the Vikings were to trade up, it would be for Drake May or JJ McCarthy. I think those two guys are like perfect for that kind of system in terms of their trades. So those would be those would be the two guys. If the Chargers are the team that they trade down with, perfect. Trade down to eleven, get a future first. I'm all about it. Sounds good. We will cover this soon, potentially with Trevor Sikama coming up. Yeah, lots of stuff to dive into going forward. All right, uh, appreciate you guys for tuning in tonight. We'll have uh, more episodes next week. Like I said, we'll, we'll probably squeeze in an episode targeting the second wave of free agents here in the next few days. We'll have Trevor Sikama on the Chargers channel on Wednesday. Uh, we're recording with him on Monday, so stay tuned for that. Talking about all of the draft implications of whatever happens this week between then should be a lot of fun. So thank you to Arjun for joining us as well as Tyler. Uh, appreciate you guys for tuning in. Make sure like comment review, all that good stuff really does help continue to grow the show. Make sure to check out prize picks as well. I forgot to do an ad read. So that's the kind of day it was for me. Um, so go use prize picks to uh, win yourself some money this week. So appreciate prize picks. Hope you guys have a, a great rest of your week. Appreciate you as always. Bolt up.